good evening and welcome to the Key Stage 3 graduation ceremony. I'm disappointed that the current government restrictions mean that we can't hold the celebration in the normal way, but hopefully this version will be almost as enjoyable and informative. Tonight we'll be recognising just some of the things that you've been up to this year and looking forward to your progression into the upper school at Mounts Bay. Your host for this evening will be Mr Yates and I know he's really looking forward to sharing in your success. You know, a celebration evening at Mounts Bay is nothing if it doesn't include some great music from Cube Records. So here, with our first item, is Oscar, with his version of Pink Minor. That was brilliant. Thanks, Oscar. Remember, if you like what you hear, you can stream songs from the Cube Records website at www.cuberecords.org and download them from Amazon, Apple Music and Spotify. We have a lot to get through this evening and the format is as follows. We'll start with some awards and move on to a celebration of the work that has happened in our GCC Fast Track courses this year. We'll have some hellos from new staff and some goodbyes from others. Then we'll have another musical item from Cube Records before we look at what we'll be expecting of you during your time in years 10 and 11. Next, Mr Jack will be inviting you to take part in the Scholars Programme, which has been so successful here at Mounts Bay, but more of that later. Finally, before moving on to the release of the guided preferences information, Mr Payne will be talking to you about becoming junior and senior leaders through the Prefect Programme. And that's it. So let's make a start. You know, every school has a philosophy, and here at MBA, we're no different, and ours is called the MBA way, and it links explicitly with our values, our method, learning, and the awarding of achievement points. We really value character and achievement in all its forms, and think that great students understand that the two things are interconnected. Therefore, after polling all of our staff, we would like to publicly praise the following students for being a shiny example of our core values. We would also like to celebrate those of our pupils who are striving to better themselves academically by really engaging with our high performance learning philosophy. First, we're looking at our seven E's and the award for being ethical goes to Sadie and Nantakana. Sadie is one of the most ethical and aware members of our academy. She's always ready to help friends and always thinking of others. Well done, Sadie. Next up is the Award for Excellence in Behaviour and Attitudes Towards Study. And the winner is... Reese in Nine Draco. Reese has demonstrated a consistently mature attitude towards his studies, 
extracurricular opportunities and school life in general. Rhys has been a pleasure to have in Draco since year seven. Well done, Rhys. And next, we move on to be equitable and fair in behaviour. And the winner for this is Edward in Nine Takana. Edward's demonstrated a lovely quality to both staff and his peers on a daily basis. Well done, Edward. Moving on to empathy. As a year group, you've all been brilliant at this, but there can only be one winner. And that winner is Megan in Nine Phoenix. Megan, one of our most empathic members of the year group, always supporting those around her and helping them make meaningful progress. Well done, Megan. So, moving swiftly on, we come to evolution. And our evolutionary winner is Freddie and Nine Draco. Evolved, mature, forward thinking. Freddie's always consistently polite, punctual, mature, going above and beyond to ensure he succeeds and shows mature attitude towards studies and general school life. Great work, Freddie, well done. And next, it's all about being a great global citizen as we celebrate someone who really epitomises the word ecological. And our winner is Karis in Nine Parvo. Karis has had lots of involvement with ecological activities in school and she's always conscious of what she needs to do to achieve her best. <clears throat> Phew, all that's been on telly is harder than you think. And finally, onwards to the last of our six E's. Endurance. Do you see what I did there? The student who has shown the most resilience and endurance in her learning this year is Rosie in Nine Phoenix. Rosie's shown real resilience and courage despite being asked with, and faced with challenges. She's asked for help when needed and continues to work hard and show great determination. Well done, Rosie. So next, we move on to our five attributes of high performance learning. Our first attribute is meta thinking and, the, and our winner of the meta thinking award is Jack in Nine Takana. Jack always thinks outside the box, challenging himself and me by asking well-considered, thought-provoking questions in geography. Well done, Jack. Great work. What's my next link? It's LinkedIn. LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn. We're now going to move on to LinkedIn. Don't worry, it'll be seamless when it's all been cut. The winner of the LinkedIn Award for being always on task and progressing through learning material independently by using previous knowledge is Sonny in Nine Delphinus. Well done, Sonny. Next up, analysing. And our winner for analysing is James in Nine Takana. James has an excellent work ethic, regularly asks questions to check his methods are correct and discusses which method is the best to use. Great work, James. Well done. Only two more awards to go and next up is realising. Our realising winner is Bernadette in Nine Parvo. Bernadette receives the award because she always works with a high degree of speed and accuracy in everything she does. Great work, Bernadette. Our final award tonight is for creating. And our winner goes above and beyond when creating tasks in order to demonstrate her true creative flair. This is particularly apparent during our lockdown project week, where she presented numerous examples of high quality creative work. And our creating winner is Nushka. Well done, Nushka. Of course, one of the things we're most proud of as an academy is the creative output of all of our students. This reaches its apotheosis in year nine, where, as you know, students pick a one-year creative option. The work that's been produced this year has been amazing. We would just like to show you a montage of some of the excellent work that has been produced across these subjects.
well done Year 9, what absolutely inspiring work. But now it's on to saying a few hellos and goodbyes. There are three main changes to your life at MBA next year, all of which involve some changes to key members of staff who will be working with you. Firstly, Mr. 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 Payne will replace me, Mr. Yates, as your head of school. I know you'll all miss me, but I'm sure Mr. Payne will enjoy being your head of school as much as I have. And next, Miss Western will be leaving for a year and be replaced by Mrs. Harvey as head of year 10. Miss Western will then return to head of, year, head of year at the start of year 11. Neither Mrs. Harvey or Miss Western could be here this evening, but we are beaming them in over Teams to send you these messages. Hello, I am Mrs. Harvey, and I'm really looking forward to being your head of year 10. I can't wait to spend lots of time with all of you. I've met quite a few of you already and introduced myself, and I can't wait to get started. Congratulations on finishing year nine, and let's have a fantastic year 10 together. Hello, year nine was hoping to do this message in person, but um, as we know, that wasn't wasn't meant to be. So I just want to say a, first of all, massive well done. Um, the past 18 months have been crazy, um, different, and you've just all adapted and cracked on with things and shown real maturity and resilience. So I just want to say a massive well done. Um, secondly, I want to say goodbye temporarily. As you know, well, most of you know, I'm uh, off to have a baby very, very soon. Um, I'm starting maternity leave, so I won't be with you in year 10. But I will be back in year 11. Um, the lovely Miss Harvey is joining you. Um, she's going to be your head of year, and you'll meet her in September. So I have every faith that you're in very capable hands while I'm off. And obviously, all the lovely tutor team. Um, so yeah, goodbye from me. Hopefully, I'll pop in and uh, can bring the baby in and say hello at some point in September. Um, but yeah, I hope you all have a really lovely summer. Um, enjoy it, rest, relax, hopefully, fingers crossed, we have some lovely sunshine and um, keep safe. So take care and I'll see you in year 11. Can you believe it? Okay, bye. Great, I love that the technology works. And now it's time for another musical item. And here is Summer and Annie with a Q Records original called Buttercup Eyes. <laughs>
Brilliant. Thanks, girls. I would now like to take this chance to explain a couple of important things to you regarding your senior years at the Academy. It is important to understand that you are now moving into your senior years. And this means you're a role model to other students in the Academy and you're beginning your GCSE courses. And from day one, you need to be considering strategies that you can use for revision and ensuring you begin the year in an organised and structured way. But also, being in years 10 and 11 isn't all hard work. It brings lots of exciting opportunities, as well as responsibilities. And here's Mr Jack with details of a fabulous academic opportunity. Firstly, can I take this opportunity to congratulate all the students who have been recognised this evening for their outstanding progress and contributions and characteristics during Key Stage 3. I feel that you're a year group that I know quite well through teaching some of you mathematics, visiting you during lockdown and my role as head of house and most recently accompanying you to the trip to Exeter University Tremo campus just last month. It is about that sort of activity that I would like to talk to you more about this evening. One of my responsibilities at Mounts Bay Academy is to ensure that all have a good understanding of what opportunities lie ahead and when, when you leave school and move on to college and beyond. This was the reason we visited Tremo. You might not want to go there in particular, as it might be too close to home, might not offer you the right courses for you, or might just not want to go to university. All of them are equally valid reasons. However, we do want you to know what opportunities there are for you after you leave school and for you to have an understanding of what a university looks like. I think you would agree some of the facilities we saw at Tremo for the creative subjects are amazing and well beyond what schools can offer. For good reason, you probably don't appreciate that. For many young people growing up around the country, in the cities and in the towns, that they have a university nearby which they will visit three or four times during the secondary school career. These young people also benefit from seeing university students in the local community and can aspire to go to university much more easily than students who do not have the same access. Hence the reason Mrs Masters arranged last month's visit and the reason that I am speaking to you this evening. I want to publicise to you the Scholars Programme, which is a free activity we run in the spring and summer terms of Year 10. The aim of the Scholars Programme is to increase the participation of, uh, at the most selective universities of students from backgrounds like ours. During the course of the programme, the students normally visit two top universities for a launch event and a graduation. In the past, we have visited Exeter, Southampton, Oxford universities. Between the two visits, the students work with a PhD student on a cross-curricular project. They have six one-hour long se seminars working in small groups and at the end they have to write a 2,000 word assignment. The assignment that is then marked at A-level standard. As I've already said, the Scholars Programme has no cost to the students or their parents and the school funds it and therefore it's very, very popular. This year we were amazed with the positive response of the current year 10 students. We had 50 students apply for the 12 available places. Each student submitted a 500-word written application explaining why they should be given a place on the programme. Mrs Masters and I then shortlisted the students and held interviews and finally we had to make the decision on which students had been successful and which had not. I had hoped that I would have had two of those students uh, joining us for the presentation, however, circumstances have prevented this. The titles of their two separate areas of study were where should healthcare spend money to be spent and why don't people in Cornwall speak Cornish anymore? Each year the topics change to match the expertise of the PhD student. Thank you for your time and I hope that you found that interesting. If you have any questions, then please don't hesitate to contact me. I look forward to talking about the Scholars Programme with you more next year. Well done again on all your successes and I hope you have a great summer. Take care. Thanks, Mr Jack. I wish that existed when I was your age. Of course, being a great member of the school community is just as important as being a scholar. Mr Payne would now like to take the opportunity to introduce our next generation of prefects who will help to support the smooth, safe and ordered running of the academy. Hello Year 9. This is a quick message from me as Head of School for Key Stage 4 to say very well done for your graduation from Key Stage 3. You've worked incredibly hard through the school so far and we've reached a really important milestone in your time at Mounts Bay. 
you should be extremely proud of yourselves and all of the efforts that you've put into seven through to year nine. As head of Key Stage 4, I'm really looking forward to working with you over the next two years as you become Year 10 and more senior students. As you know, Miss Westron will be having some time off uh, next year, so we also look forward to welcoming Miss Anna Harvey to the team. She brings with her a huge amount of experience and she will be a great addition to the team. You've already completed one GCSE, which is amazing, but now you start the GCSE journey in full. You should be excited and ready for the challenge. Always remember that your tutor team and all the staff at Mounts Bay are here ready to support you through this exciting time, whenever you need it. As you become more senior in the academy, you will know that we are currently looking at your applications for the Year 10 Student Leadership Team. We have asked for the applications for positions of Heads of House and Deputy Heads of House for your tutor groups. You will work closely with the Year 11 Senior Prefects and become the student voice for your year group. You will also work closely with the New Year 7s as they join us in September, spending some time with them during lunch times in a mentoring role. This again is an exciting opportunity and a change to the previous student leadership system, but gives us even more student leaders. Once again, many congratulations on your graduation and I look forward to working with you next year. All the best and have a great summer. Thanks, Mr Payne. Well, here we are, the moment you've all been waiting for, guided preferences. By nine o'clock tomorrow, you should have received an email from the Academy confirming your preferences. Please be aware that preferences have been allocated on a first come, first served basis. We have tried to give everyone his or her first choice, but this has not been possible in every instance. If we have not allocated you your first choice, please be aware that we have made every effort to do so. I hope that you're all pleased with the subjects that have been allocated. All that remains for me to do is to wish you the best of luck for your next two years at the top of our academy. I look forward to seeing your achievements. <laughs>